This is a uh, jumping choya plant. These things are are like the exactly what is needed if you're a plant that lives in the desert. It's spiky all over the place and it uh, it spikes even help it to to plant itself by uh, clinging on to anything that passes by and allowing the seeds to be get, sent all over. Um, if you look, I mean it's just a just wicked spikes all over pointing in all different directions and then we got the the hanging chain fruit here um, that uh, um, have that those little patches, those little circles there, they're not spiky, but they have those little hair-like clusters uh, called glockids, and those will stick in you by the thousands. Um, and then where this plant really likes to play is it uh, these, uh, here's one, these, these little segments that come off of here. They, uh, they don't actually jump, but they come off so easily with like the lightest snag that, uh, that they're called jumping joya. And so these things will stick in you. And then also if you look down around the bottom, if you look down here along the bottom of the plant, it's like a minefield of these things. So anywhere, anytime you see these things anywhere near, you gotta watch your feet, uh, especially if you're wearing minimal shoes or, or sandals like I'm wearing today. Um, but you really got to be aware of where they're at. If you just look out over here, I mean, they're they're laying around all over, and sometimes they'll spread pretty far. So you just got to watch your step. But these are pretty desert-hardy plants. These choya plants, occasionally you'll see like a uh, kind of a gum, a resinous gum that comes out, kind of like a like tree sap sort of. Anywhere the tree gets injured, it'll have that sap. It's a slow building thing and it doesn't happen all the time so you don't always see it but it uh, that can actually be collected and has uh, medicinal properties. You can drink it as a tea and it helps for like gastrointestinal um, issues. Um, difficult to collect though because for one they're not on. You don't always find them on these plants. In fact I'm not seeing any on the trunks. They'll come out and they'll just look like a little dark nodule and then getting close to them can be an issue because you're obviously uh, walking through the minefield and uh, trying not to touch any of these because they'll brush up on you. Um, but occasionally you can find them and you can carefully dislodge them and keep those and crush them up um, if they're long dry. And uh, let me see if I can find some though. Might try to collect a few of them. There's other things that will help with gastrointestinal things. so. Um, it's nice to know, I like to know what my options are and to know um, a variety of things that will help for different purposes. But, uh, but yeah, just in this area, there's easier things to get to than this wicked minefield of, of things here. But I'll see if I can find a few little uh, nodules to point out. It's a slow process trying to walk through these ball, spiky ball things. If ever you hear that crunch, there's a very specific crunch I've gotten used to hearing that means that you've stepped on one of those things and you gotta get your weight off that foot right away and start scraping that out. Usually you can just pick up a rock or a stick and scrape it right off. Um, some people carry a comb, like a hair comb, so they can brush it off. I don't carry combs. If this one's got anything on it. Man, look at that. Oh yeah. Don't step there. So getting close to these things is always a, a trick. I don't actually see them that often, the little the gum balls. Gum balls? They're not gum balls. Um but when you see a big collection of them like this, you have a better chance of finding them. I'll keep looking. So I just got a little too close to the choya plant and uh, I was trying to brush something aside with a rock 
and it's stuck. So I wanted to point this out though because this is why they're so wicked. See how it's it's stuck in me at multiple spots which makes it very difficult to uh, to remove because pulling on one end pushes it in on another so yes but um so yeah you might got to be careful with these things yeah i got a few pieces free the real trick with these is i don't know if they're barbed on the end but they, they take a good amount of pull to get them free so it's painful no matter how well you pull them out like you can't just you think that they're narrow, thin enough spikes that they could just pull. It's hard to get them off without stabbing yourself somewhere else. There we go. You can see how some of these actually have like a little curve to them, almost like a barb. They're not perfectly straight at the end. I think that makes them cling to you a little more. But yeah, they click stick to clothing, everything. And what's really wicked is that they have a tendency to stick not just by one point, but like by, as you saw there, about six points at a time. Woo! One of the uh, issues with getting poked by these things, um, it's not so much an issue if you're just on a day hike or whatever, but if you're actually out here for an extended period of time or, or in a survival situation, of course, uh, there's the risk. Anytime something pokes into your skin, your protective skin layer, uh, you risk infection. And so I don't, I mean, I'm not even getting any blood droplets from where I got poked, but I can, well, okay, yeah, yeah, I am. But there's, um, and it, you know, you can feel it. And so it's good to keep those areas clean. And there's also other plants. Um, that would be good. Jojoba might be a good one, the leaf. And in an emergency situation, you can, in fact, here's some jojoba, I think. Um, you can, you don't always have the option to make a nice little remedy with it, but um, you know, you can do simple things like washing the area off with some water. Uh, here's some jojoba, just some pretty dry pieces, but you know, if you gather some of this stuff, um, and then in an emergency kind of thing, we're gonna chew that stuff up. Tastes horrible. There we go. Got a nice little spit poultice. The stuff, <laughs> it's an astringent, it has astringent properties. So just chewing it up, it sucks. It's like chewing on a banana peel. It sucks everything in there. But anyway, so this stuff can then be used to smear onto those areas, ideally once they're clean and rinsed. So I'm just wiping them on, i put the camera down here. So if I just take this stuff, wipe it on all those areas that I can feel them itching and stinging right now, and they're just little tiny things probably not anything I even need to be worried about but like I say in a survival thing in a survival situation you might as well deal with this because um, that rare situation where something small like this actually uh, reaches an infection level then you're in trouble and you could have prevented it with some leaves and some spit and you can't make a spit poultice out of anything these ones aren't toxic. If they were toxic, obviously you can't chew that stuff up or you're creating a new problem. Um, so yeah, so that was a fun little experience. So I think I might get a little overly excited about this, uh, about medicinal plants, but um, I just wanted to note that uh, jojoba, like as soon as I put that stuff on and it kind of dried, it took that itch, you know that itch when you get poked by stuff, uh, whether it's a thorn or or anything where it's just that surface layer stab gives you that stinging itch that went away instantly um, as that astringent properties tightened up the tissues and everything so pretty cool I mean this stuff actually works like uh, unfortunately a lot of medicinal plants or using plants for medicinal purposes for some reason gets lumped into this 
crazy magical world of hippies and witches um, and it's a uh, it really shouldn't be I mean these plants have chemicals in them it's real science at work going on there's nothing uh, magical about it um, the stuff just works if you use the right stuff and if you use it correctly uh, that being said it's a little slower than what some of our Western medicines might do um, so uh, you have to be kind of patient and and steadily applying things and stuff so a little bit different principles when using these but really good to learn I think if you're into being out in the wilderness and I'm still trying to find some of that choya gum so my wounds will not be in vain lots of choya out here just those little pockets of uh, those little resin patches are pretty rare Okay, I think I found some some of the gum uh, stuff. It's a really small uh, piece of it. Uh, definitely not much at all, but I'm going to see if I can get it. And that's the other trick, is trying to get it, because if it drops down, uh, we got these shin daggers down here. I don't want to land in there. But if you can see, right in there, it's a little piece. That's one of the smaller pieces that I've ever seen, but let's see what I can do. Balancing act. Ugh. Don't poke me. Got it. Okay. Little tiny piece. And I'm going to need more than that to do much with. But that is some dried gum. Leaks out from like wounds in the tree. Oh, it looks like something was stabbing at it there from where this thing came. Not sure what. If I collect a little bit more of that, you can uh, grind it up, make sure you pull out. There's sometimes thorns and stuff stuck in that. Obviously, you don't want to drink those. But you can smash it up and uh, steep it in water, like just like making a tea. And then um, that can help settle the stomach for different issues. So I've been looking for a while and the most that I came up was that little tiny piece of um, choya gum and as I said before there's definitely other plants that are a lot easier to get at uh, that will help with uh, kind of gastrointestinal issues. Um, there's some uh, I think the prickly pear cactus which is a lot easier to deal with is uh, has similar properties to this and that it gives you kind of that protective coating inside uh, for healing ulcers and things like that. And then also the um, uh, Canyon Bursage. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but uh, Canyon Bursage. It uh, that is if your stomach is kind of cramping, and I've used it before for that, and it seems to be uh, very good. Um, and there's a whole slew of different gastrointestinal issues, and so there's not one miracle plant, and each one has their value and things, and and it's just good to know what's out there. Um, but for this, uh, the thing that's important to know is that there are other things that are um, that work. There's nothing super special about the choya gum, in my opinion. And for as hard as it is to get to, it's um, there's usually a better option. But it's good to know that it is an option. If you know, if you happen to come across some, then then there it is, kind of thing. So um, fun. So I'm gonna go look for something else now.